The starting point for working with the Web Audio API is the creation of an audio context. So let's take a look at exactly what creation of an audio context means. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'll come up here in the URL bar and I'm going to type about colon blank. And this is just to get a completely blank page that we can experiment with. And then I'm going to go over here on the top right of the browser. And I'm going to go to more tools, developer tools. And this will open up the developer tools in the browser. And in this case, I'm using Google Chrome. Now, once you've opened up the developer tools, just make sure that you're actually here in the console tab and not in one of these other tabs like elements or sources. Now let's go ahead and let's type audio context into the console and hit enter. And what we see is that the audio context is recognized by the browser and that it's a function. We also see that it's considered to be a native function. Native function meaning that it's a standard built-in JavaScript function. What are some of the other native functions that we might already be familiar with? Well, there's string. There's number. There's array. And there's date, just to name a few. The thing about these built-in native functions is that if we invoke them using the new keyword, we get returned to us an object that now has access to special properties and methods. So let's try to invoke the native date function, for example. We'll go ahead and invoke it with the new keyword and assign it to a variable called date. So we'll say var date equals new date. And now if we examine that date variable, we can see that it has access to all these special methods, such as get date, get day, get full year, get hours, get milliseconds, and so on. And that's because the native date function essentially provides us with a blueprint off of which we can construct instances, which then get access to all the special properties and methods of that blueprint. So with this in mind, let's go back and let's take a look at the audio context constructor function. So we'll set var ctx, ctx being context. We'll set that to be new audio context. And then if we take a look at ctx, what we can see is that it's an object with many special properties and methods. So at first glance, we see things here like base latency, current time, destination, listener, and so on. But if we continue to look up the prototype chain here, which is accessed through these double underscore proto double underscores, we can see many other properties and methods, such as create media element source, create media stream destination. We can keep going. We can see things like create oscillator, create panner, create periodic wave, etc. All of these properties and methods are what make up the world of the Web Audio API. And we got access to all of them because we invoked that audio context constructor function with the new keyword and assigned the result to a variable.